another short story from a short scary storybook. If you want to steer yourself. The story I'm going to be reading is Harry. Usually at six o'clock, Freddy's father came home. Dad, do you know a scary story? Do I know what? A scary story, said Freddy. Did one ever happen to you? One happens to him every day, his father answered. It's about a man who comes home and has to tell stories. You're mean. You think it's fun for me to hang around in bed all the time? No, I don't think that. His father looked at Freddy's leg. Has it gotten better yet? Yes, he said. It's just the boredom that's gotten worse. Okay, maybe I'll tell you a story after dinner. A scary story? You want to scare yourself? Okay then, you'll hear my story about Harry. After dinner, his father sat next to Freddy's bed and began to tell the story. It happened when I was in seventh grade. I was so bad in math that I was going to be left back a year. One day, a new boy came into class, Harry Ackerman. He was very different from us. No one liked him. What do you mean, different? asked Freddy. Well, Harry didn't seem to care one bit about how he looked. He always wore the same black shirt and the same black pants. Hair was down to his collar and looked as if he'd never washed it, and his face was an unhealthy pale color, and he smelled so peculiar that no one wanted to sit next to him. Except when we had a math test, because in math, Harry was the best. He could even stump the teacher with his questions. Of course, Harry soon noticed that I didn't have the foggiest idea about math, so a couple of times he suggested that he would be glad to tutor me, and he didn't even want to be paid for it. Turn his offer down every time. Something inside me kept telling me to say no. But one day when an exceptionally hard assignment was due, I let myself be talked into studying with him. You won't regret it, Harry said in a rough voice. Where shall we meet? I asked him. At your house? No, he said quickly. My place is no good. But what about at your place? Do you have your own room? I nodded. And do your parents leave you home alone sometimes? Yes, my mother cleans people's houses in the afternoons, but why do you want us to be alone? Why? Harry gave a hoarse laugh. Because we won't be distracted then. Then that seemed reasonable enough at the time. Although I didn't feel find the idea of being alone in the apartment with Harry especially appealing. But then I told myself Harry was just a classmate, a boy my own age, and I arranged to meet him that afternoon at four o'clock. My mother left the apartment and right after her doorbell rang. Harry stood in the doorway a half hour early. I suspected he had been watching from the stairwell, but I didn't think anything. He went to my room. I noticed that the unpleasant smell coming from Harry had gotten stronger. I suddenly felt as if I couldn't breathe, and I yanked the window open. Harry watched me. Is something wrong? he asked. No, no, I said quickly, and sat down. We opened our books, and Harry began to explain the math problems to me. After we worked at, for an hour, Harry said that was enough for one day. He was right. I was so exhausted, I was falling asleep over my notebooks. <sighs> When I opened my eyes, Harry had disappeared. I looked at my watch. It was a little past six, and I could hear my mother coming home. The next day in school, I was still tired, but when it was my turn at the blackboard, I was at, I was able to figure out the math problem that Harry had explained to me. That afternoon, Harry and I studied together again. We sat beside each other at the big table in my room and did more problems. This time, I hardly noticed Harry's unique aroma, and I had also gotten used to his strange hypnotic voice. Harry was an excellent tutor. For the first time, I felt that math might be a subject I could learn from after all. We made more progress than the day before, but once again I fell asleep. Harry was gone when I woke up. I have no look at my math, my math notebook, and in there, right under the last problem we did, were two little spots of blood. I checked my hands, and I couldn't find any cuts. The next day, we had a quiz. I managed to solve more than half the problems. I got a C. My first passing grade in many months. Harry praised me, but at the same time, he insisted that we must not stop my lessons or I'd forget everything. So we continued to meet in my room every afternoon. And every afternoon after my lesson, I would fall asleep. It was embarrassing, but it didn't seem to make any difference to Harry. At least he never mentioned it. I got better and better at math. Our math teacher, who had practically given up on me, thought it was a miracle. He didn't know that Harry was tutoring me, and neither did my classmates. I didn't tell anyone. Not even my mother knew I had a visitor every afternoon. 
She gave only notice that I was suddenly getting good marks in math and that I was always tired. Soon I even started to fall asleep at the dinner table. My head would simply fall forward and I would wake up when my mother would shake me by my shoulder and ask anxiously whether I was sick. Finally, she insisted on taking me to the doctor. He said I had a severe case of anemia and prescribed some pills for me. From then on, I took three pills a day. Nevertheless, I was still tired all the time. It got so bad that I had to spend a week at a time in bed. Harry never came to see me that week. Maybe he had found out that my mother had taken a leave of absence from work and was staying home all day. Within the week, I recovered so much that even the doctor was surprised. When I went back to school, I was told that Harry had been absent for the last two days, too. No one knew whether he was sick. I decided to drop in on him that afternoon. Our teacher gave me his address. Harry lived, Harry lived on a street at the other end of the town. On the way there, I kept wondering why Harry was going to our school if he lived so far away. Finally, I got to the street our teacher had said was Harry's. It was a narrow and dark street. On either side stood large gray blocks of apartment buildings that all seemed so oppressive that I felt like running away. Harry lived in the second to last block. It was a building like all the rest. The plaster was crumbling and the paint had flaked from the window frames. The front door of the building looked old and decayed and the board that held the buzzers was full of wormholes. I tried to read the names on the faded labels. I couldn't find Ackerman, but two of the labels were legible. I would just have to climb the stairs from floor to floor to find Harry's apartment. I opened the door and found myself in a long, dark corridor. In the dim light that came through the dirty panes of the front door, I saw something I saw something large and flat. My heart began to beat rapidly. I turned on the light switch and was relieved to find it was a mop that had someone had left to next to the cellar door. I walked on, but I couldn't find the name Ackerman on any door on the, on the first and second floors. So I climbed the rickety stairs and that rattled and creaked with every step up to the top floor. Wieland, it said on the left door. Epstein on the right one. After a moment's hesitation, I rang the Stein bell. A young woman with a baby in her arms opened the door. She looked at me suspiciously. I'm trying to visit a classmate, I said, embarrassed. Yes, so, she asked unkindly. His name is Harry, Harry Ackerman. Don't know him. But he's supposed to live in this building, I said. She shrugged her shoulders. Go ask the white ones. They've been living here for 30 years. We just moved in six months ago. Without another word, she slammed the door shut. I rang the Wyland bell. After a while, I heard sh a shuffling footsteps. Who's there? asked the voice behind the door. I'm looking for a classmate, I answered. Harry Ackerman? The door opened and I saw an old man. An unusually large pitch black cat wove around his legs. They won't live here. They don't live here anymore, he said. But our teacher gave me this address, I replied. Harry Ackerman, the man spat out. It sounded as if he didn't think very highly of Harry. His poor mother. His poor little sister. I started to get those goosebumps. Tell me what happened to them, I said. Gone, he said tonelessly. All gone. How do you mean? They both got sick. Chlorosis. Chlorosis, I repeated at a loss. First his mother had it. She got weaker and weaker until it was too late. Then his sister got it, and it wasn't two weeks before she was dead. Dead? Yes. Suddenly I felt sorry for Harry. I had never guessed that he was having problems at home. Was Harry sick too? The old man laughed bitterly. <laughs> Not him. On the contrary. He got stronger every day. He seemed to be thriving. Some of us here in the building even thought he broke off and added in a whisper. Some of us thought he had something to do with his mother and sister's illness. How could... Anyway, Harry disappeared the day his sister died. He disappeared? I asked, astonished. Yes, I haven't seen Harry since, but he's in my class. The old man looked at me and smiled mockingly. How old are you? Fifteen. Is that so? Harry Ackman would have to be at least forty by now. Everything I've just told you happened twenty-five years ago. That's impossible, I cried. Then I stopped, for just as the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle eventually fit together to make a picture, my mind suddenly formed a terrible, completely unbelievable Im image. Harry's old-fashioned clothing, with unpleasant odor, my indistinctive distrust of him, 
The deep sleep I fell into each time we studied together. My constant tiredness. The spots of blood in my notebook. The doctor's diagnosis. What? What is chlorosis? I asked. <clears throat> Another word for anemia, he answered. I saw the old man as if through a fog. He asked me something, but I didn't understand. There was a roaring in my ears, and I thought I was going to faint. I turned around and went down the stairs, my legs shaking all the way. When I got home, my mother put me to bed right away and blamed herself loudly for head and let me go out, all, at, out at all. I never did see Harry again, and I also never again had anemia. Freddy's father finished the story. Did you like that one? He asked. Yes, said Freddy. But did that all that really happen to you? His father smiled. You wanted to hear a scary story, and I've told you one. Were you really going to be left back? Mom always said you were good at math, because Harry explained it all to me. So there really was a Harry? Of course. And was he a vampire? Maybe. Anyway, I managed to pass math after all, and that was the main thing as far as I was concerned. Tell me another scary story, Freddy begged. Just one more. Make one up yourself. If it were that simple. The end. Don't be scared. Like, subscribe, share.